And welcome to Don Bucher's Reads, my new podcast. I'm excited to introduce you to my future guest today. And he is Salvin Mulbaro from Klaberka, formerly known as Port Elizabeth in Eastern Cape, South Africa. I'm going to give us a short introduction, but um, our guest will introduce himself um, in full in a moment. But this is um, my contribution before we have Salvin come on and uh, tell you who he is, what he does, and all the amazing work he's doing and has done so far. So, just in short, Selvin is an author, a poet, a screenwriter, publisher, and YouTuber. He published a four-poet anthology named In Pursuit of Poetic Perfection in 2018, featuring myself, Don Bukas, Selvin Mulborrow, Bevan Bochenpool and Leroy Abrams, with guest translator Batsala Rarakisun from Mauritius, also appearing, uh, translating one of my poems. Um, in this episode, you will listen to some uh, readings and other audio clips by Salman give you a background of his journey as a writer and his creative path. I asked him to share his vision as well, as well as his mission, his vision and mission for writers of color, especially in South Africa and beyond. In this episode, Selvin will share up to three poems and they are in English and Afrikaans, also my second language. The three poems are entitled Talibunga, This is America, A Poem is Just a Poem, and a Surprise, Afrikaans, poem to his wife, entitled Net Ye, translating to only you. So before Selwyn comes on, I um, ask him to give in-depth um, explanation of who he is, what he's been doing for the past 20 years, and how involved he has been in not just the Afrikaans and English language, but also Isitosa, which is one of the major 12 lang official languages in South Africa, recognized after apartheid when Mandela was interred as the new democratic leader of the country. He will say more about all his work that is done. So before um, Salon comes on, um, I will use this opportunity for this part of um, the recording to actually um, read a synopsis of the book that I mentioned before in pursuit of poetic perfection, I put together with Bevan Brockenthal and Salvin Mulborrow, myself, and Leroy Abrams. The synopsis of the book reads as follows. In this unique new anthology published by liberal publishers, four South African poets speak out they write about love, loss, victory, and experiences of racism and apartheid in a divided society. 
They share personal stories and reflections of communities ravaged and captured by crime, but also celebrating life and the healing power of being loved and romance. Born on the African continent, these poets were prepared by Africa and positioned for a purpose in pursuit of poetic perfection. These poets are united to speak from the heart, to give life to their muted voices and hearts, to reveal their very essence, once forced to remain silent, dismissed, ridiculed and shoved aside for the colour of their skin and cultural heritage. Being from mixed race background, referred to as coloured in a South African context, their poems tell us to live courageously. The poems in this collection pro promises to do exactly that, to proclaim the message of living courageously amidst global swirling clouds of discontent and disorder. Poets have an ethical and moral responsibility as the voices of society. These four poets from a generation of courageous poets are now ready to take charge of their own literary and societal destiny. I will now read one of my autobiographical poems. It's called You, Ode to a Childhood Magazine. Incidentally, this was a magazine where I used to read in Afrikaans, which was my only reference, really, um, reading articles during apartheid years from the age of 12 right up to university and the liberation of South Africa. You. Ode to a childhood magazine. Rain angrily spitting against my window. Tears of these times. Sounds of social grime. Ignoring humanitarian heinous crime. Words twisted. Witnesses resisted. You, my childhood companion. My weekly global communion. It becomes my worldly window. Shielding me from the imploding carnage below. A welcome momentary historical freak show. A country burning, emotions simmering, stirring in the seismic hot pot of clashing cultures. My teenage years warped by a racial cord amidst the political cauldron. Damaged children, you, molded by shared historical glue. My people ousted, left with brittle pride. Another tear gas canister, nowhere to hide. Burning, churning, apocalyptic murmuring, disbelief, authorities maiming, children wailing, Reagan steering a sustained superpower, Thatcher not relishing her finest hour, her subjects equally raging, revolting, Gorbachev a political lock, branded with a fiery mark, P.W. Buta spitting rhetoric, a miserable parliamentary mimic, Voices echo, words burn, fallen fascist wall breaking in Berlin, global politics entombed by clashing critics, you constantly reporting political marketing, world wondering why all this racial suffering, British pr protesting against color division, only we understand the true mission of our country on a declining doom journey unrealistically plotting a pure unblemished yearning. South Africa in a smoldering spiral. I myself feverishly searching your printed pages for transparent answers, yet saw nothing. One-sided minds divided the racial sting. You, suddenly an instrumental dubious being. School days become haunting untold tales, bombarded with tearful gas, guilty or not, Vehicles stoned, the city in flames, lessons cancelled again, intellectual strain, final exams written with military protection, windows shattered, protesters angered, education disturbed, stirred, choked, the country shudders, shivering mothers, you awaits, words offering fleeting momentary escape, but what about the murders? Tensions shatter, expected conventions, thousands protesting, the West not investing, messages twisted, innocent children arrested. The 80s bleeding out, our lives a riotous roller coaster, no end in sight, such military might. Table Mountain covered in aching 
ash, solution seemingly crushed, education's sole priority, poisonous politics remain authority, tears painting my fears, faith guiding me, country failing me, you, my literary tool, our freedom suppressed, the party to wither and die in its purified nest. In the book of, that I mentioned before, written by myself and, and the other poets aforementioned, uh, this is a short introduction um, from me as well for the book. Four poets unite. This is no joke. Four poets liberated from the cultural joke hold, political mold. Their word weaving promises to be literary gold, eradicating centuries of untruth told by racially elected centurions, controlling their willing minions to rule over racially classified millions of all shaded skin hues. But they were ostracized for not being of pale skin, even though they had European skin beautifully blended with African cultures. Although dismissed by self-appointed false prophet racist leaders, happy to be trusted as their souls liberators, united they stood establishing agreed falsehoods, attempting to eradicate, delete, dismiss, target and ultimately deplete their new colonial haven of coloured fodder, enacting racial murder of original indigenous tribal inhabitants forced from their ancestral lands, with no stain on their purified rulers con conscience. These poets are united to speak from the heart, give life to their muted voices and hearts, revealing their very essence, forced to remain silent, dismissed, ridicule and shoved aside no more. We want to reach out, attempt to disintegrate the new racial cloud, to leave the new generations with a proud legacy of unification, forgiveness and hope for a future colorless society, united, cemented and liberated. I have a Afrikaans one that I wrote. It's called um, Kindriara, which is Childhood Days. Rooi gepanser en klokbroek en al, die sieventigs is gevol met nieuwe klanke. Sondag rituele sluit in kerk en koeksisters en buiten waar die wind samt aan. Radio Blair, ek verlang na jou, wie is dit ma? Sonne Herald as haar naam kind. My eerste Afrikaanse note uit was syn so raar en nie weer verlang daarna. Die tafel gedek de dwing respect, tafelberg staan en terg, Hoi skade wees werelde weg vanaf hier op die vlakte. Drome begin tuimel, vat raak. Die trein huil, snu oor verdeelde spore. Die berg in sig, o, prachtig dis gewis. Hoekom rui ons derde klas? My sister stel my geris. Ek schud kop, maar geen verstaan nou. Andere loer my so. Ek voel skam in die stad, my ka, hulle stad. Die berg is stink. Hulle vraag om hulp en ring, kan wees daai? Vraag ek vraag. Ek word weggerik en slik, blonde koppie stap oor rent, ek gimlag, maar hulle loer my so. Die eetpik is vol, vol uitgesluit, waar is oos mense dan? Eet gerui word, uit een gesuk, neergegooi, kort afgevraag, wat ons wil hee? Hoe ongemaneerd borrel ek, my sister ruk weer aan my, andere loer my so, maar het sag is onder mekaar. Ingelaad in hulle wereld, word nou weer terugkeer, Ek voel nog steeds snaaks, kan nie verstaan, die trein kreun op verdeelde spore, dit draai weg, weg. Die berg blauw, nou spikkel mooi, dan in rooi getooi, soos die son sak. Veilig by die huis, die herhinderinge bly, maar wat is verkeerd met my? My vraag ontbeantwoord, my tong gewikkel in kinderlijke strijd, die klanke voer my mee, trein na mankies van tuin, Mama, dit is Sonja! Ja, my kind, kom, help my gauw, los nou die radio. Buiten, waar die wind, sun, aan. I would like to invite our special guest, Salvin Mambaro, to introduce himself, 
his platform, what he has been doing for the last 20 years in, um, in literature and the literary world in South Africa and globally. I've also asked Selden to share his vision and mission for authors of colour in the first instance as well as reading some exclusive poems from Selden Mulberro and there's a quote that I want to share as well from my side in this recording session um, it's a quote from Madiba Nelson Mandela and it says education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world this quote by Nelson Mandela is very personal to Salvin because he started his BA degree in literature studies very late in life and it has changed the life of Salvin Mambaro as well through Madiba's leadership example Salvin says he has found new courage I now want to invite Salvin to finish off this pivotal and historical episode to introduce this phenomenal writer and publisher to the literary world. And now I'll give over to Salvin. Welcome Salvin, thank you for giving your time to us. And I hope everyone will listen intently and also share this episode. And for everyone else, please follow the podcast, Don Vickers Reads, available on Spotify, Anchor, and Google Podcasts, as well as Radio Public Online. Over to you, Selvin. Thank you. I'm an author, poet, screenwriter, publisher, and a YouTuber. My most recent award was the 2021 Living Legend Award by the South African Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture. My award was in recognition of my hard work and in community development as a conveyor of knowledge and access to information, commitment, passion, and pioneer work in language and literature. It is an honor when your country shows appreciation for one's contribution to the arts, culture, and creative industry. So I am really humbled and honored to have received that reward. Well, for the past 20 years, I was involved in convening workshops for the youth and also doing adult writing skills development. I presented literature, poetry, and storytelling workshops to listeners and learners, and especially during the National Art Festival. Uh, in Grahamstown. I was honored to teach uh, scholars in the area and my focus was uh, English, Afrikaans and Ishikosa languages as a medium for literature development. I have spread it out to libraries with the municipalities in the Eastern Cape and I also published five books and co-authored four and two of my books published by Vivlia Educational Publishers were prescribed for high schools. Recently, uh, my poetry, Afrikaans poetry, was uh, introduced into the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee in the United States. And they teach American students uh, the Afrikaans language. So it's quite an honor as well and uh, achievement for me. So I do have a YouTube channel with the name Saul Nobro, as well as a Facebook page and Instagram. And I also have a Masterclass Writers Instagram page, Facebook page, as well as the same for Marlboro Media. Wow. 
what is Selwyn Mulgrew's vision for assisting authors of color in the Eastern Cape in South Africa? Well, my vision started when I was practically uh, in primary school, when I started writing and even drawing. Don't apartheid really messed up non-whites in South Africa. It messed up their lives and uh, it has set us as coloreds back almost 500 years. Today, almost 30 years after apartheid scrapping, people of color have still been struggling to find their place in the sun. As a young man, I was told that I did not stand a chance to get published by established white South African publishers. Well, I ignored the warnings and I had to experience the doors being shut in my face personally. And I told myself that this was wrong, but that nobody will open a publishing door for me. I managed to get the attention of the big publishers and newspapers only after self-publishing my work and sharing it online. Down this experience made me realize that my fellow brothers and sisters of color will walk down the same path of humiliation. I had to do something. More than 10 years ago, I started Mobro Media and Masterclass Writers Group. The idea was and the vision was that you'd work parallel with each other by offering writing workshops to develop writers of color and then publish them when they were developed and ready to impact the world around them. I've done collaborations with you, Don, and two other masterclass writers, namely Bevan Bochampul and Leroy Abrams, and that was exactly my vision. It really opened doors in the world of arts and culture for us all. That is my vision for every writer out there, still being given the cold shoulder by established writers. I poem tribute to Nelson Mandela. Talibunga from the House of Tembu. The cries of a nation in mourning message the world. A great tree has fallen, but a giant has risen. Talibunga, you were raised to stand tall, like the river reeds beneath Mtata's mountain. And like a gavel, you stamped your feet in the Tembu house. Your long walk was slow and seemingly senseless but slogans of resistance could not be muted on African soil or on the world stage. The spade of Robben Island is now a scepter. It holds its ground on the windswept hills amongst the aloes and flowers of Kuno. Your long walk is now complete and your songs of freedom unmuted as it echoes in the house of Tembu. Utatomkulu, you nestle children on your lap and now rest on the ageless hills of Kuno. Yes, we shared you with the world, but they have a lot to learn from your legacy. Madiba, we are sad, but not brokenhearted, because our rainbow nation flies on wings of emancipation. The following poem is, This is America. And it was written after Donald Trump and his pawns through immigrant children in cages. No Madonna and child painting can match the excruciating cry of a child separated from a parent. Being Hoda Gatria to a child is the most basic relationship known to human beings. It's an innate longing for belonging birthed in the womb's warmth and beyond the cold grave grows for memories don't die like people. It's inside reaching out like a mother's tender touch becoming love's life-giving brush on a canvas called life. Suffer the little children and forbid them not but what do we know, what do we know of life and love's austere and its lonely corners hardly spoken of? A 
poem is just a poem. Tonight, in a brief moment, like a poet of bygone days, moved by bygone longings, I commit poems upon poems. Because what counts and stays are verses mummified on paper. Every time it is picked up, every time it raises a head, light is shed upon this love poem. A poem is a poem just to be a poem. And all I can offer you is this committed poem. Thank you.